Oops, let me do it this way. I don't know what happened there. Welcome to the studio. I hope everybody can see me and see what I'm doing here. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to paint this guy over here. Here's a grayscale copy I have. Uh, this little green tree frog, he's so cute. I just thought it'd be fun to paint. Uh, I'm doing a couple of things a little bit different today using a sheet of Fabriano hot press watercolor paper. Here's what it is. 25% uh, cotton, 75% wood pulp. And I did a little test of this guy earlier. And these are the basic colors that I'm going to try to stick with as I use this. Right, phthalo green. I looked at him initially and went, oh, he's really uh, bright green. So how does phthalo look? And then I mixed that over here with a little bit of Hansa yellow, just to get it a little bit warmer uh, uh, green tone. And then he's got down here on his leg, he's got a lot of um, purple on him. So this is cobalt. Uh, blue and um, a little bit of oops alizarin crimson in there this is thalo blue and alizarin crimson here those bright orange hands and feet and eyes that everybody likes about these guys what can I do with some of that orange so I first went well what does reg my regular orange look like it's not quite right it's a nice orange it's azo orange here uh, then I went, okay, well, what does gamboge look like? And it's way too yellow. And then I went, well, how is a pyrrol red and gamboge going to look? I got a color that's a lot better. And here's kind of a, a quick little one I did. It's obviously it's not done yet, but uh, you can see I've got a lot of the colors in here. Maybe a bit muted in some places. I needed a a bit redder in some places but the greens look pretty good and that's kind of the color pattern I'm gonna stick with tonight uh, up here I've got my M Graham watercolors uh, they're over there I'll talk about these as I'm going along and tonight for no particular reason I'm gonna grab some da Vinci paint brushes and just use those as always anybody who's here if you have any questions about anything please throw it out in the chat let's make this a uh, a two-way kind of a thing make it fun for everybody and I'm just gonna start mixing up some paints and we're gonna go from there so a little bit of this yellow the paints are a little dry here yet but a little bit of this Hansa yellow and a little bit of phthalo green to make this nice light green color for us. We're going to start with that. Mix a nice puddle of this. There's a lot of green going on here, so we can get that going. And uh, I'm just going to put a nice color on him. I'm going to start by putting in some areas. Just about, I don't know, like this. And uh, for me, this is a little different. I haven't used hot press in a while. I've used hot press before. I used to use it much more. And uh, then I kind of fell out of, uh, <laughs> or it fell out of favor with me. I fell out of favor with it, one of the two. I just kind of didn't like it quite so much. It didn't react the same way that cold press or rough paper reacts. And uh, for some reason, I didn't like it quite as much. So I've stopped using it, but uh, I kind of, I don't know, for whatever reason, I just thought, well, this might be a good opportunity uh, to get back into this. And I'm going to paint this in kind of a couple of different areas here. I'm going to paint one area at a time and maybe by doing that I can I, I can utilize the benefits of some of the um, hot press paper qualities here and maybe that will help me get back into using 
some of this hot pressed paper. Uh, you saw I got that giant booklet of it there, so I might as well. He's got a little green that comes down on his lip somewhere over there, like that. Might as well get to using it. There we go. I'm going to use that as his head, something like that. We're going to obviously be coming back and doing uh, more layers on this as we go. I look up. I'm, I'm seeing people hop on and hop off. I hope, I uh, hope anybody who's here is uh, stays. Please ask questions. I love, I love to get questions. I love to answer things. There aren't too many topics that are uh, questions that are off topic uh, that I'm, I'm afraid to answer. I answer just about anything. So uh, feel free to throw something out there. I'm going to make a little puddle of this phthalo blue. There we go. And let's see. I'm going to jump down on his arm over here. A little bit of this color. It kind of comes down almost to his elbow and then like it crosses over and way on the inside over here. He's got a nice bit of it. And then he's got this nice green on the other side. Excuse me, I got a little itch on my eye there. Uh, and this green comes, I don't know, down and around, down his finger down here somewhere. About like that. This would be a time that I would really look to uh, blend these colors out. But on this frog, uh, these colors just have... A lot of the colors, especially like right here, they have just such a defined stop and start. And I think I'm going to let that try to work for me a little bit. Uh, what am I looking for? Yellow, yellow, yellow. And it's this hot press paper that just allows the color to move a bit more here and a bit more there uh, that I'm hoping to take advantage of as we're painting this guy down and around this way comes over over his knuckle almost all the way across his wrist and back up to his elbow if I've drawn that kind of correctly And then dipping back into my color here, my blue. Just trying to keep that just ever so slightly away from his shoulder back there behind his arm. And this one I probably will blend a just a little bit. Let's see, that blue comes right down there. I don't know, something like that. Uh, just let me make one quick edit here on my page. I think I got it now. And let's get back to painting a bit more of this guy. I'm going to leave that like that. I'm not going to do too much. If I try to blend this out too much, I'm going to lose a lot of this paint, and it's probably going to run pretty far. Maybe, well, maybe I can make a small blend right there. And now I think I need to start to work on a nice, a big puddle here of Pyrol Red and... Oops, a little bit of this hence of yellow. So a nice big puddle of pyrol red here. Nice, it's a nice bright red. And a little bit of this yellow over here. And that's going to give us a beautiful orange. Look at that. 
beautiful orange it's just a little bit more of that yellow in there there we go and I'm gonna work on a couple of his feet down here that nice toe comes over I don't know something like that we'll make it work right there there we go nice orange foot there that's probably just dry enough we can get back into this one now I remember why I stopped using these Da Vinci brushes I, the feels nice to use this brush it doesn't come to much of a point this one I'm probably gonna have to if I want to have any real control over this I'm probably gonna have to move to a size smaller it went out of the line there I guess it wouldn't matter if it went out of the line but it's gonna bug me as I look at it I can't can't do anything about it we'll we'll cover that up when we work on the tree branch that this guy is on now I imagine we're actually painting this guy quite a bit larger than he is in real life I think these guys are only like an inch or so long Does anybody have any real knowledge about tree frogs out there I certainly don't other than the fact that I know they look cute I think it's the big eyes that does it and I'm just trying to get some base color in here right now and we're gonna come back in just a minute and we'll put in start adding in some contrast and some details and all that other fun stuff that goes along with painting these guys uh, I think what I need to do is start a, a purple puddle here a little alizarin crimson and some cobalt blue a nice purple here There we go and I'm gonna paint a little bit on this leg and if if we need to change this in just a minute or two that we can do that change the value that'll be fine I know there's a couple people watching please if you're watching at least say hi let me know where you're from let me know what's going on in your neck of the woods I'm out here on the central coast of California and I've got a sweatshirt on this evening because it's quite chilly we're gonna get down into pretty easily into the mid 40s tonight maybe a little bit into the lower 40s got up to I don't know 62 today something like that not very warm at all but um, actually while I've got this color I'm gonna paint a little bit on his foot here and then I'm gonna go back into my purple and I'm gonna to try to get just just a little line in here I'm gonna try not to mix my purple too too much I know it's gonna mix a little bit and I just I don't quite want these two to touch here I want to leave just a little line between the his the his leg his thigh and his and his shin down here I'm gonna just gonna move this real quickly 
And if anybody's watching and they're having a little trouble seeing, let me know. I can adjust the camera to help. Lots of stuff we can do. All right, and while I've got this purple, I'm going to water this down a little bit more. Actually, let's just need to make it a little stronger. There we go. Water this down even more. And I know that uh, up in up in here, he's got some nice purplish color to them. So I'm going to start to put some of that on here really lightly. We'll see how it goes. Does that go down his arm too? Goes down his arm. All the way over here. Let's just do a lot of it in here. I'm going to turn him just to make it a little easier. It's actually got some darker blue back there on his back, but we'll get to that in a second. So the thing that I always thought was really strange about this hot pressed paper is that the more I, or the moment I, I should say it this way, the moment I stop painting, these edges start to harden up. Right, you get a hard edge on here really quickly. And I always just thought that was so odd when if you use I got a little bit more water in an effort not to get hard edges. I, can, I used a little bit extra water and I can probably get a little bit too much water. If you use cold pressed paper, what am I using here? Lizard and crimson or hot uh, or a, a rough paper, it seems to hold the water in so much longer. But on here, with hot press, it's just, it's like on here and dry. <laughs> and I haven't quite ever figured out why it's so stark of a difference like that. I, I know that the... cold press has little pockets in it that water can get in and gather but I have a hard time believing that is the only answer it just seems a little strange that that would be it but it might be hey Gloria Wallace you love green tree fox I think they're beautiful from, from um, Cairns Australia wow Actually, I was just listening to a book in, on an audio book that actually took place in and around Cairns. And it took me a while to figure out what everybody was talking about because your accent is so different than anything I'm used to hearing couldn't quite understand what the 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 reader was saying he said Cairns he's up in the the jungle area that's what he kept calling it, the jungle area by Cairns I went what is that and then I looked it up and the novel takes place up by Cairns what I would call Cairns I guess that may not be the right way to pronounce it, but welcome. I don't know. It's probably really early in the morning there would be my guess. I don't know. <laughs> North Cairns. All right. I'm going to, uh, now that this guy's, he's got one full coat of paint on him. I think I've wasted enough time. I can go back. Let me make a, a bit more color here. My color is dripping all over the place. Maybe I'm not quite level here. My paint's running out of my palette. I'm going to 
come back and start to put in some dimensionality in this guy. And I'm going to start with his eye back here. And I've got way too much water on my brush. Start with his eye. Let's just darken that up a little bit. That will help his nose stand out just a bit. And then we can start to just look to see where we can add some color on this guy. I'm going to color around his eardrum here real quickly. I want that to be a layer lighter than everything else. I'm looking at his eye. He's got some darks all through here. Something like that. We're going to be going back over this. Uh, so you know what? I, that brush is just splitting a little bit. I don't want it to just split a little bit. All right. I'm going to mix a little bit of olive green in with my mix. That's just going to make it. It's just going to take the tone down a little bit, make it seem like it's a little bit darker maybe than really it is. Oh, that's that's a bit better. Make it look like we've got a little bit deeper shadow on a couple of areas here. And I think with this little bit better brush, I can get into a few tighter areas like that. And I am going to try to just bleed this out ever so slightly on a couple of these places. We'll see how it works out. Anybody who's watched me before, you know I love a nice graded wash. I do graded washes everywhere. I really don't like hard edges. <laughs> I just want to have a nice... Graded wash, a nice edge to it, or a nice lack of edge, I guess is the better way to put it. Let's see, what else? He's got a little nose here. I'm going to leave that. That's wet. I'm going to let that sit for just a second. I'm going to come down to his arm down here. And I'm looking at his arm, and he's got some nice darks underneath here. It's 1 in the afternoon here, and Karen's is really a beautiful place. It's called... A tropical rainforest. Yeah. Uh, it sounded great in the book, other than the crocodiles. <laughs> that guy couldn't, couldn't leave his house. Had some geese that he was tending to that he picked up. He was always worried that the crocs were going to get his geese. But it sounded like a beautiful place there. I've always thought Australia was interesting. I really kind of do want to go and visit someday. I bet it really is lovely. I really do. Well, I was talking with my son about this the other day. There's so many places in this world that really are quite beautiful and probably we just take them for granted and we shouldn't, right? Uh, I've lived five, six, seven places over the course of my life and I think when I lived in each of those places, I didn't, I probably didn't give it the justice that it needed and uh, didn't appreciate where I was at when I was there. I look back now and I go, man, that place really was a pretty nice place that I lived. I should have paid more attention to it while I was there. Uh, I'm just dropping. This is, uh, you saw me dip into a different color over there. I'm just putting in a little bit of sepia here. I'm going to darken up a couple of lines throughout here. 
and the sepia just really helps with that. Quite honestly, we moved here. I've been here where I'm at now for, oh, I don't know, 15 years. That sounds about right. And when my wife and I moved here, I went, oh, God, it's kind of a desert. And I'm like, is this really where we want to live? It's, it's so brown. Everything's just brown. There's no green. And I had come from a place that was all green all summer long. And, and I just was like, ah. Oh. But I'm here more now, and the longer I'm here, I'm like, yeah, actually, you know what? There's quite a lot to like about this place. And that's what got me thinking. Probably don't give all those other places enough credit. Because they were all probably pretty beautiful, too. And Gloria, if you have any questions, throw them out there. I love answering questions. I'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. It's a little old if it's just me trying to trying to talk through the whole video. So if you if you have anything to say, you want to say it, throw it out there. You want to have anything you want to talk about, let's talk about it. I I guess I'd prefer if it dealt more with watercolors, but it doesn't have to. I don't, I'm not worried about that. I, I'll talk about anything. You are just going to have to endure a couple of starts and stops here and there because it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard, hard sometimes to, oops, let me go with my dirty water. It's hard sometimes to talk and paint at the same time. So if you can if you can deal with a couple of starts and stops in my speech, I'll talk with any uh, about you with anything you would like. Do you paint watercolors or you just like tree frogs? <laughs> Anything's possible. I picked the frog because I I think they're cool. We we have it's pretty dry here. We don't have a whole lot of uh, frogs that chirp all summer long here, like like I did where I grew up in Ohio. And uh, this year we had a little bit of rain, which was exciting. And so we actually got some frog sounds. I I was excited about it. I, I used to go on a walk earlier with my son, earlier, like like earlier this year, late last year, every every night, and we started hearing him, and I was really excited about it. Him not quite so much, but <laughs> I was like, that was great. Got some frogs, got some frog action. I don't know where they go to the rest of the year, though. I don't know. Treveni, hello from India, hello, welcome to my stream. Thank you for tuning in. If I can answer any questions for you, please throw them out there. These live streams are always more interesting and more fun for everybody if we all... Uh, talk, ask questions. I'll ask questions about my paint, my painting style. Yeah, like I said, if you ask me about anything, I typically don't have too many problems answering questions. And if I do, I'll just tell you I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> That's how I, just how I'll handle it. But I've never been afraid to answer questions before. And India, let's see, India, it must be earlier 
Then it is in Australia. Gloria's from Australia. Says it's one in the afternoon there. I don't know, it's such a long way away. I don't I don't know the time zones. Actually feel a little bad that I don't. I don't have the opportunity to travel much, so I don't know. I've never been to that part of the world, even really to know what it's like. I would suspect, I do know a little bit about Australia, not that much. I guess I know a little bit about India. Again, not all that much, but a little bit. I suspect it's uh, in some instances, quite like the United States, where they're both big enough countries that uh, it's different in the south than it is in the east and different in the west than it is in the north. Am I doing wet on wet? The paint seems to glide smoothly on paper. Here it's 9 a.m. Um, I'm not really doing wet on wet with this guy. I am using hot pressed paper. So the paint is going to move around a little bit more than it would if you used cold pressed paper. There's no texture on this at all. So the, the paint just slides around wherever it wants to go. So that why, that's why it might look like it's, it's really uh, moving around quite a bit. Uh, if you were doing this on cold press paper, you would have to wet the page or, or hurry in right, be, right behind yourself uh, to, uh, to get the same effect. And, I, and, and I'm not working in the largest area here. Let's, let's be honest about that. So I've got quite a bit of time. Even if I were using a cold press paper, I'd probably still have enough time to come back and, and manipulate this a little bit. Um, let's see. Oh, you love my tutorial. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's very nice of you to say. I appreciate that. Uh, I try to have my tutorials just, you know, I, I am what I am as an artist, right? I'm never, I'm not Picasso. I'm not uh, some of the greatest artists in the whole world, but I do, I, I really do love watercolors and I love helping people understand watercolors. And if I can pass along uh, what I like about watercolors, then I think I've done a great job. And, and if you like them, that's fantastic. Thank you. I, I hope you continue to tune in. I'm going to mix up uh, a little bit more of this purple. As I'm looking at this guy, I'm going to See, he's got like a, a darker area up here that comes across. If you like my tutorials, you know I love graded washes. I haven't used um, hot press paper in a long time because it's really hard to get a good graded wash on here. It just it doesn't lend itself to it nearly as easily as cold press paper or or rough paper but I'm gonna give it a shot here and I think we can do it uh, this guy a, a good service for um, what we have going on here and he's got some dark that comes under his chin I'm trying to give him a little bit of dimensionality here this is why I'm doing it this way this goes all the way up to his lip up here and across. And there we go. So just a little bit of dimensionality here to the underside of his the underside of his lip there and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do uh, this area right through here kind of I don't know I guess that's kind of like where his collarbone is uh yeezow the color is so close to the photo it's it's getting there I got a couple more layers what I did 
I don't always do this. Um, I should turn, I was gonna turn my face camera on. I don't have a good spot for my face because my reference photo over here is so large. But what I did this time is I, I went into my palette over here and I went, okay, I know what color that frog is. And I'll just move kind of this over towards the reference. So what colors can I make? And so I mixed up phthalo, straight phthalo, phthalo plus Hansa yellow here. This is cobalt and alizarin crimson, so, and phthalo and alizarin crimson, so I know what my purples might look like. The phthalo blue, kind of like the blue that's on him over there, right? And I mixed up a couple of, well, this is azo orange straight out of the tube and gamboge, and this is pyrrole red plus gamboge, so I know I can mix that a little bit. So I kind of did a little bit of pre-work here to know how I wanted my colors to look. I don't always do that. I probably should. Um, but I don't. But I think in this instance, uh, it, really, it really helps. I don't typically try to make something that's a photorealistic uh, version of what I'm drawing, but... Here, I think it's going to be a nice, a nice, um, nice representation of it. And I don't try to do a photorealistic drawing of it because, well, for two reasons, really. One is it puts a lot of pressure on you as an artist. Uh, if you're going to tell yourself it's got to look exactly like the reference photo, that's a lot of pressure. And, and two is... Um, I've got a photo of it. <laughs> it's right it's right there that I can look back at it. I want to take that photo and, uh, and and kind of do my own thing with it. So I'm just going in here. This is a little bit of straight sepia. And I'm going to put a little bit of, of that purple in with this to, to lighten this up and purple this up, if that's a real word. Uh, because he's he's got some dark areas down here, and, and if I can put in a, a nice dark down here, it's going to make his uh, orange hands really pop that much more. Hopefully I didn't get that too dark. We'll see how this lightens up. And this comes way up his side. Up here, I'm going to pull this up a little bit. Just grab my brush and pull it up. Actually, it goes over onto his arm. It's got a nice dark all the way over there. And then I'm going to blend it out. I'm going to keep pushing this paint up. It's going to try to pool at the bottom a little bit because my table is slanted. And just a little bit of water on my brush and just kind of jiggle it around ever so slightly. And I'm looking back here. He's got like some blue gray on his back back here. I'm going to see if I can put some of that in right now and if it blends in with this other color I'm totally fine with that here's a place where I can see clearly on that reference photo right he's got a uh, some spots over there I'm not even gonna bother to try and put those spots on one because I don't want to be painting until until midnight uh, tonight here. It's quarter to nine, and and two. I don't know that that's such a small area. I don't know that that's going to help us out um, in the long run, anyways. Uh, and then over here, I'm going to go back with my purple. Um, whoops! Almost dropped my brush making it more blue than than red. I want this to be behind that leg. That's his shin here. It can, it can be pushed back a little bit. 
doesn't need to be perfect. I don't know what perfect is. Everybody always says, oh, it's got to be just right. Or I've heard that so many times. Maybe not everybody says it. I've heard it so many times. It's got to be just so. And I'm like, why does it have to be just so? It's got to be just however I'm going to paint it because I'm the one painting it. I think so many times as artists we get caught up and I, and I will readily admit it happened to me early on in my painting career. We get caught up in trying to listen to what other people say about our artwork. And then you make a change and you tweak it based upon what somebody said. And then you make another change and then you make another change. And pretty soon your artwork isn't like your artwork was a day, a week, a month ago. All of a sudden it's different and you're looking at it and you're going, why Why is it different? What did I do? What you did was you made a little change here and you made a little change there and you allowed what somebody else said to you to, to work its way into your painting. Um, and I say that and I don't mean that we shouldn't listen to others if they know a better technique or something like that, but um, there's so much we can do to develop our own style that after you've got a couple of the basics down pat right you know how to do a flat wash you know how to do a graded wash you know how to do a variegated wash I'm gonna turn this just to make it a little easier to get some color in his eyes here I apologize for that uh, that after we learn those first few tricks then we really should be trying to figure out what our own artist's style is. And then if you want to incorporate a few more tricks in after that, let's incorporate a few more after that. The one I really like, that I think everybody should do and we don't do nearly enough of, is we all need to focus on darks. Right? We all, we all know... Watercolors are painting light, but we don't realize watercolors are also painting dark. And if we don't paint dark, we don't have as much light. So there's a there's a balance there in the in painting stuff that's light and stuff that's dark. And how do we get that difference in there? And I think that difference is probably some of the more interesting stuff. Right, you can have um, uh, you can have a decent painting, and it just look okay. You know, maybe a little whatever scene you want to paint is a nice scene. And then I'll bet you, for most of us, if you come back to that painting and you really push the darks, if you make your darks dark that all of a sudden you're painting that just looked okay, yeah, I'll bet more often than not when you look at it, it's going to look a lot better. That's just how it is. Darks are a wonderful addition to lights as we paint, and we don't pay enough attention to that. But the big thing I think that people need to do is really is develop your own style of painting. Find out what you like. Paint that way. Does it work for you? Does it not work for you? For me, I like those impressionist style paintings. Right? I think they look so neat. You know, it looks like you've just taken some color and kind of splashed it on your page. And before you know it, you've got this wonderful, ethereal kind of... a uh, a painting that elicits, you know, some kind of reaction from everybody. Well, <clears throat> I love those. I've tried to paint those. I don't do all that well with those. <laughs> I really don't. And and so I I continue to try. But I think this I would call this a fun painting. Right, just for me. This is a fun painting.
painting. This is where uh, this is where I get the most enjoyment out of watercolors. I'm not trying to make a photo realistic. I'm not trying to make it loose and wet. I'm not trying to make it anything. I'm just trying to take my subject and honor my subject by painting a nice painting of it without the pretense of being something else. It's just a nice painting of of whatever my subject matter happens to be. And for me, that's that's where I get the most. I don't know if that's where I'm best as an artist, but that's where I get the most enjoyment out of doing things. Painting dark is challenging for me. It gets dirty easily. Um, yes. Um, yeah, dirty, muddy, it, that's a challenge. Um, uh, I, I, if, if I could give you any advice on it, if you've got, if you're trying to paint, um, a dark and it's getting, your, your painting's looking dirty or muddy or something like that because of the darks that you've put on. Um, I might suggest that uh, your darks go on maybe in a different proportion. Um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe the darks that you have are actually too much Right, meaning the, the darks are covering too much of the page, and uh, you might be better off to. Um, what am I saying? Keep a lot of middle tones and just put a few darks in there. I keep this handy, right? This is my grayscale reference, right? So it looks a little funny when you look at it uh, next to a color painting, um, which is why a lot of times I have this, and I can go and I, there are only a couple of places, a few places here, his eyes of course, maybe his back here, that are as dark as you should be painting, right? Most of this frog the vast majority of this frog is in, is in one of these two values, so not even the darkest it can get. And um, I'm gonna—I don't know if I'm gonna put a background on this, but if this frog is a value four uh, here, either the lightest part of this frog around the outside is a value four, and I paint a background on him, the way I like to do it is I can't have my background any more than three steps closer, so I can't do anything more than a value seven. And that value seven is really light, right? Um, and if I look at him, I've got, uh, actually, I've only got this little tiny area, and that's not even, a, I don't even think that's a value one, that's a value two. But um, what I'm saying is, if, if your painting starts to look muddy, uh, maybe, oops, I hung the wrong thing up. Maybe you've got too many darks and dial back on the darks a little bit, the quantity of them, and um, just go with everything being, a, you know, lighten your tone for the whole thing a little bit and then make your darks relatively darker. Does that make any sense? I don't know. I hope that makes some sense. I really hope that makes some sense. I Just shift your scale a little bit. And I realize that's easier said than done. Uh, thank you for the detailed suggestion. I hope it helps. I don't know. Um, it, it. I used to get called out a lot when I was painting. Everybody would say, oh, watercolors are... Uh, painting of of light, you have to capture the light. You got to let the light shine through. And 
I would always try to put on darks. I think I think I used too many darks. I probably still use too many darks, but I I try to scale it back a little bit at this point and not not in my whole painting, right? I, I probably am not going to paint over his nose here. Uh-oh, I'm out of focus. Come on, refocus. Shoot, it makes Okay, good. It makes sense. I'm, I'm not going to go over his nose here. I want that light to be light. And I've got that nice dark behind it so you can really see there's something back there. It's a, it's a, it really is a matter of uh, picking how you use them, the darks, and where you use them. Because if you, can, if you can get a good placement on a dark, it really is going to make your lights pop out that much more. So I, so I haven't seen any of your work. I can't, I'm not critiquing it. I'm not criticizing it. I'm just saying, you know, one thing you might want to think about is dialing back the, the use of your darks a little bit as, as, a, as, a, as a whole across your painting and then allowing uh, some more lights in punctuated darks. I guess that's kind of what I'm trying to say, punctuated darks, if that makes sense. Uh, let's see, this was Thalo. I think I need to, remember I said he's got like this collarbone that goes across here that's kind of darker. Kind of comes from here and goes across. I'm just really going to draw that as a line going across. It goes something like that put it in I could put even a little bit darker in here and then I want to blend this out and that's gonna hopefully if I do this properly it's gonna give him just an a little bit more dimension going through here it's hard to get some dimension on uh, this area it's it, it's funny I'm painting in purple and I know he's purple Right, the reference photo is purple, but he's white. He's not purple. <laughs> I mean, it's not really white, but it's white. So why are we painting in purple? I don't know. It's always seems funny. I got a little bit darker area here, and if I get a little bit of this other color in here, I'm not going to worry about it. That's I guess that's the other thing I've done recently is I've stopped trying to worry about getting my colors correct, right? Correct, in quotes, whatever that is. Uh, and letting whoever is viewing my painting, let their eyes pick up what colors they want. Everybody's eyes are going to pick up slightly different colors. Um, everything's going to look slightly different to another person. Actually, I'm really liking the way this guy's looking up here. If I can pick it up and you can see, even though I've got some hard edges on there, I think he's looking good. And I love this modeled area. I'm, I think I'm going to come back and I'm going to make a couple of these areas even darker still. But I'm loving this, this, this dark area on this. Like I'm going to do the same thing right here. Right up underneath here, that's going to get darker. And I'm going to make all of this area up here darker. And then just blend that whole thing out. And I think that's going to, I think that's really going to work out for us. I think he's really going to start to look good here. As we drop in some of these colors and as we get to his hands here the hands are important because they they show so much character in these frogs and I'm just about to the point here I, you guys can't see it but I this is one of the things I don't like about <laughs> um, let's see if I can do this a little bit let me I can't uh, let me see if I can just Zoom this camera in a little bit. 
Maybe make that a little bit easier for everybody to see. That might be a little bit better. Uh, I don't know if you can see, there's just a little bit of pilling right here. And that happens for me oftentimes with uh, hot press paper. And so I've got to I've got to tone it back here a little bit. I like I I like to I like to scrape and I like to scrub. I like to um, have fun with my paints and and push them around and do all kinds of stuff. But I don't think this paper likes me doing it quite as much as I like to do it. So I might not be able to do too many more coats right there. And here, I'm just trying to give some dimension to his feet, right? I don't need to do, we don't need to do too much with this. But we do need to do a little bit. got this big, it's like a long fingery, a fingery finger, a finger, a big toe here. And I oftentimes will just put a little bit of that color, a little bit darker maybe underneath. Right in here to make it stand out a little bit. And it's, it's nice that we have this orange next to that green will help that green pop off the page a little bit maybe a little too much water on there at the moment take that off All right here we've got a finger right there a finger right here any other questions? You guys got any other questions? Anything you want to talk about? Talk about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, Tracy here. Beautiful work. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think he's starting to come together. He's getting better. I just got to do a little bit here and a little bit there. And we're going to have a really nice looking tree frog here in the not too distant future. Uh, I think what I need to do is I'm going to mix up a little bit of dark here. I'm going to I'm going to go back to my sepia. I I probably use more sepia than anybody knows <laughs> than anybody anybody else knows. That might be the way to say it. I'm going to put just a little bit of my cobalt green in there. Uh, I like sepia. I think it's a wonderful color. It uh, it mixes pretty well with everything else, but I'm going to put it under here. Right, there's a little shadow area, a little dark area underneath all of these toes, feet and toes here. I'm just going to drop a line underneath there like that. I'm not going to do too much because I want to blend some of this out. But I want to make sure I've got that dark in there. That should help him stand out a little bit. And you know what? He's not in the bright sun. If I, I made that determination. If he were in the bright sun, we would have to put a dark shadow line underneath here. And it would be a small shadow line. And it would be very distinct. But because I did made the determination that he's, you know, on a shaded stick, kind of semi-shaded, right? That we don't need that big of a, a 
shadow line, but we're going to give him a little bit of a shadow here anyways. I'm going to blend this out. I'm just going to keep blending this out until I get it exactly like I want. That's the other thing. Everybody always says, everybody always says, you always watch when somebody starts a sentence by saying, everybody says, because usually that means not everybody says it. But in this case, there are quite a few people who whether they be watercolor artists or not, usually not, that they say, oh, watercolors are so unforgiving, they're so difficult. Well, I guess maybe they are in some ways, but in a lot of ways they're not. Look, I just put this on and took it right back off, and all of a sudden now I've got this shadow under his feet here. But I've, I've never... Uh, fully agreed with that statement. Right? Watercolors are pretty forgiving. Once they dry up, well, they're a little tough. And if you use a really staining color, if you use a lightly staining color, it's not that bad. If you use a heavily staining color, uh, it can be a bit tough from time to time, but, but mostly it's not that bad. My favorite mix is Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Sienna. Ooh, that's a good color, too. That's a good color. That's, a, that's like a mix, a play on warms and colds. Those two do play well. Those two colors do play very well together. <clears throat> All right. Oh, I got. he's got a toe over here. I probably should put something under this toe here. And then we don't have to do too much more with, with him over here, right? There's, there's now he's got a little, uh, little something under his feet. This one's got to come out. I just looked at this. These ones come out a little further, so this one's got to come out a little further, right? Look at that. The watercolors are working with us. Uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Yeah, I don't. I, Actually, I don't have burnt sienna on my palette. I have burnt umber. I don't have burnt sienna. But ultramarine and burnt sienna really are a nice combination together. It is a, it's a nice warm and, and cold. I think... Um, uh, who's, the, who's the guy? Uh, Thomas Schaller uses a lot of ultramarine and uh, burnt sienna. I believe, in his paintings. Uh, it's wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so I've got a few people here. Let me ask you this question. Do you guys use thalo blue or thalo green? Does anybody use thalo blue or thalo green? I'm betting I know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyways. I just picked up this big brush, and this this is a... Da Vinci Casaneo brush. And and while you guys are thinking about that answer, I'm just going to tell you, I haven't figured this brush out. This brush holds so much water that it's difficult to use. I hate to say that, but it really is. It's hard to use. There's so... Uh, it holds so much water. You dip it in your pot and holy cow it just it just continues to come out and come out and come out I'm so what I'm doing before I look up to see what everybody's answer is I, I, I'm putting a shadow a low light I, I think it's easier to call it a low light than a shadow on this branch right I put a little blue down at the bottom it needs to be a little darker down there and I'm just going to tease this edge up. I'm going to tease it up pretty far. So that uh, when I turn it back around, we've got something that is starting to look cylindrical here. It's not, and I don't have any perfect 
lines on it, so it looks a little jaggedy. But now he looks like he's sitting on top of something. Uh, mainly use Thalo Blue. Tracy, use Thalo Blue mainly because it's so strong. I love Thalo Blue. I'm just going to tell you, I am, I am the, <laughs> I don't know if I'm the world's, I'm the biggest Thalo Blue proponent. Uh, and Thalo Green also. I love Thalo Green also. And I, I, and I've come to the realization that I like those. I don't know that everybody's ever going to use those, but I think they're wonderful colors, and I rarely use them um, straight, precisely for that reason, Tracy, because they are—they're so strong. You—you you put it on something, you're like, oh my God, it's going to take over everything, absolutely everything. But I have found that you can tame them. <laughs> you can totally tame them. And they like being tamed. <clears throat> and once you figure out how to do it, oh my lord, you can mix up some wonderful colors. I, I should say, actually, I came to it because uh, I was trying to put together an impressionist palette of colors. So what colors did the impressionists uh, use? And one of the colors they all had on their palette, and I'm not necessarily talking impressionist watercolorists, I was just talking impressionist painters. One of the colors they always had was thalo blue, and I, and I was looking at it and I'm going, how is that possible? Their paintings aren't so crazy and just pow in your face. Well, the reason is because they almost never use it straight. And I got to thinking, wow, I, I'm going to try this out and see if this works. And lo and behold, it does. It's, it's amazing. Oh, now... Now, see, I put in some, uh, added to my middle dark here on my frog, and, and I'm so happy about this. If we look, he's got some darks out here right underneath his chin, and that makes it look like his chin is kind of hanging over a little bit. And then we got this little bit, and then this little bit, and it's got this light area in between, and I think that makes it look so nice. It's making it look so good. Um... And I think if I were to put in a few, like, super darks in here, <laughs> super darks, that uh, he would just pop off the page, even just because I've got this middle in here like this. I'm just going to drop a few extra colors here and there on his hands. I don't actually want to do too much more with, with his hands. I just want to add some extra little lines here and there. You know, maybe enhance the color. I know not all of these colors are exactly right, right? His hands up here, they're way too light. Actually, we can darken these down just a little bit, but they're way too light for the reference photo. All right, I, I get that. And so what, <laughs> right? It's, it doesn't matter. It does, nobody's, well, I shouldn't say nobody, because somebody's going to come along and look at it and go, well, I, you didn't put this in. That really isn't the proper color. But for the most part, nobody's going to look at this and go, oh, that's not, that, that's way too light. They're going to look at it and go, wow, there's a big difference there. It looks like there's a shot of light coming up right there. Complementary mixing is key. That's true. And that's a big part. That's hard, and that's hard to do sometimes. <laughs> I mean, it's not hard to do, but it's hard to do, if that makes any sense. Because we all get caught up in looking at, at a color and going, oh, well, that needs to be here, that needs to be there. And then, and then you're looking for that exact right color, and we're not going to find that exact right color most of the time. We're going to find something that's close, but... 
and then we're gonna try and mix it and we're gonna like, just jump in and do something <laughs> it's not it's not gonna be right and that's okay watercolors is is as I've gone about my watercolor journey I think watercolors is less about getting the color right although color is important because we're obviously painting something colorful and we want it to look nice and bright and fun or at least I do I shouldn't I'm not going to talk for everybody but um, and if we don't get that it, our paintings sometimes seem like a disappointment whether they are or not I would put it to most people that uh, you can take even a even an average painting what, what somebody's going to call an average painting and add a little bit to it here and there and it's going to make it so much better it, and that's a lot of the key between somebody who's a more experienced artist I'm not going to say a better I'm just going to say a more experienced artist and somebody who's a little less experienced is knowing what those key elements to add are And, and I know I was going to make a point about something else, and I have totally forgotten. <laughs> I've totally forgotten what it is. Uh, my reference photo, this guy, you can kind of see like some uh, musculature in his leg here. So I want to add a little bit of that in. That's, that's all I'm doing there is just a little bit of something. And his leg here, I'm trying to get the, a couple of the values a little more right if that is a word a little more right than a little more wrong and so I'm just trying to add a little bit of something here and a little bit of something there and we'll see in the end if it comes out to be something worthwhile uh, I have black here uh, and I'm going to get a different brush. And I'm going to tell you, my biggest problem with watercolor painting is painting a line. And I'm going to attempt to paint a line. And it's probably going to be terrible. <laughs> That's, I, I would much rather grab a Sharpie and draw uh, this guy's eye than ever try to paint that line around his eye but for this little bit I can do this I do need to change this a little bit I should oh uh, you know what I should have done a little bit more on his eye before I added this I wasn't thinking I don't know you guys didn't let me you guys didn't make me think about it before I did it you just let me go ahead and throw that color on there that's okay. It's okay. It's watercolor. We can, um, well, you know what? I'm just going to let it go for just a second. Uh, I'm going to let that black dry. And I'm going to look at my reference photo here. And I'm going to think, do I really need to add anything else here? I, I, I think his eardrum is a little too bright. I'm just going to dab on a little color there. Let's take that down. I like his eye. I like his nose over here. Maybe we could give him a little bit of color underneath here. A nice green. I think that's too much. So without worrying about it, I'm just going to blend some of that away and I think that's better and I think when we put a little line in there for his mouth that'll look even better I think I've lost focus a little bit again there we go uh, but in general I think this guy's looking pretty good uh, I can go a little darker here on his arm so the green I'm going into right here, I can pull this back a little bit. This green here is thalo green on my palette. And I love to mix that with any of my yellows, to tell you the truth. Makes a beautiful mixing color. And 
And I don't need to take his color down here a lot, just maybe a little bit more. I don't have as much of a highlight on this arm. You see just a little bit of highlight in that green there. Not really in the blue on his arm. I'm going to leave the blue kind of the way it is. I don't want to darken up this blue. I don't want to make this blue any more intense. I should say it this way. I don't want to make this blue any more intense because if I make this blue more intense, increase the saturation, then uh, it's going to be fighting with this dark that's behind it. So I want to leave that a quite a bit lighter. And now as I put this next uh, layer on uh, his 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 forearm here I think it's looking better I like it more that that's a little bit darker and I'm not worried about the, the the hind leg back here it can it can be whatever it wants to be uh, I just want this arm to stand out in front of the one in back um, that's pretty dark right there I really like that uh, my branch has lightened up uh, quite a bit up here, or down here, I should say. I like that it's gotten a little mottled through here. It doesn't look like it's any one color. It's it's a stick. It's um, it's exactly what it's supposed to be. Uh, I just need to okay cancel. Um, I just needed to look at one thing real quick on my broadcast structure, uh, and I'm gonna. Maybe I've waited enough. I'm going to grab Pyrol Red, a little bit of my Hansa Yellow. If anybody's curious, I have my palette set up so that I have my colors warms and colds, warms and colds. All right, so my, my yellows warmer on this side, warmer here colder there same with blues warmer colder greens I'm not sure greens colder to warmer that's interesting um, but <laughs> I'm not sure how that one got to be an oddball uh, but so that it's easy if I if I want a cold color I can grab a cold color if I want a warm color it's easy to grab a warm color and it can just do that and I don't have things mixed in the middle where I have to think about it I can just grab it and go and there we go we saved that guy's eyeballs right there they're much better looking now than they were before but now I have to let that set for a second um, should I put a little background on here if I put a little background it's gonna be very light I guess we can do small simple background you know this guy's out in the rainforest somewhere so we gotta we gotta put something on here right so let's just put this on i'm gonna mix in some blues in here on the bottom half i'll mix in some warmer colors up there on the top half my backgrounds i don't worry it's going to be a little interesting doing it on this hot press. I haven't done it on a hot press. It might make it look better. Might make it look a little strange. But I like just light, simple backgrounds. If I'm going to mix in another color, I'm okay with that. We'll just drop it in there. Make sure it mixes and plays happily with everybody else. Right, and while I'm waited, uh, upload also, sir, real time. It, um, the video is being uploaded in real time. It's going out there right now. So when we're all done here, it'll be out there for, well, probably forever. <laughs> for good or for bad, it's going to be out there forever. Uh, uh, Samir, but thank you. For speaking up and saying something like I said I like when people uh, talk in my streams makes it easy then I don't you know makes it easier I don't have to babble on for an hour 
as I'm doing something. And, uh, and, and you guys will probably get a little bit more out of it, too, as you will can get whatever answers uh, to any questions you have. I guess while I'm talking about me babbling on for a while, I should say, um, ugh, trying to be real careful going around this guy's eye, that if you're interested in watching more of uh, my painting. I will be painting on Twitch tomorrow. If you don't do Twitch, that's fine. I'm actually going to be doing another frog on Twitch tomorrow. I've kind of gotten in the habit of uh, doing a theme for a week. So this week just happened to be frogs. Last week it was birds. A uh, week before that it was the desert southwest. Um, but I'll be on Twitch tomorrow, Thursday, at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in the U.S. I don't I, where where that's going to be in anybody else's time zone. I don't have any idea. But you can find me on Twitch. My channel is, uh, or my name over there is Watercolor Michael. You get a lot of the same. Okay, I got to flip this guy around. And my background, like I said, my background is very light. I don't want a heavy background. My theory has always been if I paint a bigger, heavier background, all I'm doing is taking away from the main subject, which in this case is our frog. Okay, uh, now I told you I'm terrible with uh, lines, and so I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to try to cheat with this first. <laughs> this is, um, God, this is a colored pencil. I'm trying to look for the word. This is a woodless colored pencil by Ku Inor. Keep going good work. Thank you. Thank you. I'm the best, right? I'm the best. <laughs> Samir. Uh, Samir, you're so funny. Um, and I'm just going to try. Let's see. He goes all, his mouth goes all the way back here. I guess if I do this, this kind of makes it um, multimedia, right? But uh, this will give it a nice kind of a soft line here. There we go. Now you can see... A bit of his um, mouth there as it goes over, uh, about like that. <clears throat> a little bit of it, and I'm going to try. I'm just looking at his eyes now that everything's wet. I'm going to see if I can't. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this dark enough on his eye. I might have to. Uh, this is what I always hate to do. Because it comes out so dark. I'm going to try it with a liner. Let's just try it. If it comes out a little wonky, it's going to come out a little wonky. That's okay. I've had lots of wonky paintings before. We'll just try to... Try to. Am I out of focus again? Let's come on. Come on down. Back into focus. I hope that worked. Make sure I've got most of my color off of here. My problem is my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Painting something black on a brush with black bristles. And it makes it tough. It makes it tough. But we've got that one. I'm just going to put a little bit of a dot of some black down here on this one. Help it stand out a little bit. I've kind of bifurcated this. I'm going to pull this up just... 
a little further. All right, it's a little big around there, but I think it's gonna work. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give him some highlights in his eye. You give him a couple of highlights and he's really gonna take off. He's probably got a couple over here too, something like that. We could actually give him a couple actual highlights on his the pads of his foot down here. We don't need too many, but a nicely placed one here and there usually comes in handy, does a nice job. Give him one up here. And I think that's about it. I'm gonna call this one pretty much good. I don't wanna to do too much more to him. I think I'm gonna be dry enough. I can sign him right over here. And that's what I've got for everybody tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching me paint this. I hope anybody was able to, to, to go along with me. If you want to paint along with me in the future, uh, there's a link to Discord in the doodly-doo down below. Uh, I post all of my references photos in there. If you want to paint the same thing that I'm going to paint, um, you can actually print it out or or um, draw from it uh, before and uh, paint along with me if you want to. Um, I've got some people who do that from time to time. Uh, I don't know what else is down there. Links to my website. Um, social media, everything like that. Uh, but that's all I've got for you guys this evening. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Join me back here next week, 8 o'clock Pacific, uh, next Wednesday, and we'll paint something else and have a good time then. All right, we'll see you guys later. Thank you for joining me. Good night, good day, <laughs> goodbye, wherever you are. <laughs>